we plan to do a tour of sprouts today. I wanted to go over with you um, some healthy food options uh, as we go forward. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, things that you need to do in terms of reading labels to make sure the foods that you're getting are the quality that you want. We'll do a little discussion along the way of the dirty dozen and the clean 15, uh, because those are really important. Wanted to kind of quiz you along the way. So come on and join us and let's see some good food options. Uh, I've spent many years being gluten-free now, so I just wanted to uh, let you know that there are really good gluten-free options now. T 10 years ago, not so much. It all <laughs> tasted like cardboard, but now there's some really good gluten-free options. So one of my favorite gluten-free options in terms of bread um, is this uh, Kenya Bakehouse um, seven grain bread. Really tastes amazing. Uh, and uh, um, my kids think it tastes like real bread um, and they'll eat it with no problem whatsoever. Of course, they're my kids, so, you know, they're a little bit different than most families, but really it tastes very much like real bread. Um, they also have, what do you think of? They also, they also have recently come out with some sub rolls, uh, which are kind of nice. They have hamburger buns, which are also very good. Um, and they do have bagels. So here they are. Um, they do have bagels nowadays, not only plain, but everything bagels as well. So they really cover all the options. I'm not saying bread in general is particularly good for you, but if you need some bread every now and then, if you really need it to, to break break good habits and, and have, throw the bread in there, these are really good gluten-free options. We're, let's talk a little bit about some of the kombuchas today um, because everybody knows kombucha is good for you, right? Because uh, it's got all these probiotics in it. If you've ever looked at the sugar amounts in some of these kombuchas, you may decide maybe it's not so good. So here, let's take a quick look at a label. Awesome. So, so here, just for an example, is Health Aid Kombucha, and this is the pineapple cream symbol. So, mm, looks like it would be pretty good, right? Um, so total calories is 80 calories, but if you look at the ingredients, you've got 14 grams of sugar and 12 grams of added sugar, which means essentially they just added sugar to it. Either it's in the form of pineapple juice or it's in the form of sugar itself. So if we look at the ingredients here, um, the first ingredient is the kombucha, second ingredient is pineapple juice. Uh, so there's your sugar, straight pineapple juice, which as you guys know, juice, probably not the best for you. It doesn't have all the fiber in it. Uh, so anyway, just an example here, you can watch, watch your kombuchas here. Um, I want to point out the flax uh, section, the uh, um, Relax for Life flax muffins. Uh, these are the brownie ones, toasted coconut brownie. Um, obviously, they are not sugar-free, but they are gluten-free. They're um, mostly flax, so they're full of omega-3 uh, fatty acids. Uh, and if you need a snack, uh, a treat that's not particularly great for you, but still gluten-free and uh, fits the need, these are great. I've actually done, um, my kids love, great, I break some of these up into the bottom of a bowl and then I'll make uh, homemade chocolate pudding on top of it with uh, almond milk or uh, ripple milk uh, and then a little bit of coconut whipped cream or almond milk whipped cream on top and they think the world uh, has like just served them. They've died and gone to heaven. So these guys are a great option. Uh, also, if you need something for a, in a family affair, um, the uh, gluten-free blueberry flax muffins, they have carrot muffins, and they have cranberry orange ones too. Um, so all of these are good. They're, again, they are by, not, by no means sugar-free, but if you need to have a treat for some occasion or you need to fit in where you're going, these are a nice option to have. Let's talk for a second about some of the uh, deli section here. Now, um, if you're eating something um, at the deli, Lunch meat in general is not a great thing for you. Um, if you really are in a hurry, I'd prefer you eat a little bit of lunch meat than just carbohydrates because the protein is really important for you. Um, so if, as far as looking at the uh, lunch meats here, uh, what, you're looking for, what you're looking for if you're getting something is you want no antibiotics in it. Um, you want no MSG and no gluten. Um, so these guys, um, I don't see gluten-free on the label here. Um, but if you flip it over, you can see pork, water, honey, uh, maple syrup, brown sugar, sea salt, celery powder. Now, celery powder might as well be MSG, but at least it's a more natural source of MSG. Um, and otherwise, there's uh, no nitrates in it at all. 
Um, and nitrate free is definitely what you want because nitrates are preservatives. So every time you eat your nitrates, you're preserving yourself and your arteries. Not really what we want to do. So if you have to have a lunch meat option, something like this is a good option. So when you're looking for a, uh, things like hummus, you have a whole row of hummuses to choose from. How do you really decide? Well, it comes back to reading a label. What you don't want in your ingredients is MSG. MSG um, is glutamate. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter in your brain. So when you're eating it in your food, it's essentially causing brain cell death over time. So the more you eat, the more brain cell death you got. Welcome to our population. Pretty much 90% of the foods you find in the supermarket are going to have MSG in. So you have to learn to decipher what MSG means. So here we've got two different types of hummuses. We've got the Cedars Organic, which certainly it's organic, so it looks like it should be better. And then you've got the Lantana Pepper um, hummus, which, okay, how do we decide which one is better for us? Well, if we're looking at the ingredient list, we'll do a quick blow up of the ingredient list for the three pepper. We may have to hold it on there for a second to read it. And then for the Cedars, And so if you're looking at the ingredient list uh, on the uh, uh, cedars variety, there is no um, ingredient saying spices. Spices is always MSG. Autolyzed yeast extract is always MSG. Yeast extract, MSG. So we don't want MSG in any form. And they have figured out about 10 different ways to label it, to hide what it is. And you don't want um, the, if you look at their ingredient list for the three pepper one, about uh, the sixth ingredient down is spices. Spices means MSG. Until, unless they say no MSG on the label, that means MSG. So you don't really want to be grabbing that one. I will promise you, if, you've been, if you start getting really good about taking um, ingredients, out, taking the MSG out of your food, making sure you're not getting foods that have MSG or spices or autolyzed yeast extract, um, in your food, um, you will actually be able to taste the difference. Um, I had a client uh, years ago who was a foodie. Uh, he was on the road all the time, and he worked really hard to get a MSG out of his food. I kept promising that he'd figure it out, and one day, 7 o'clock at night, he calls me up on the phone, and he's like, Dr. Jen! I'm like, what? He's like, I tasted MSG! I went to this <laughs> restaurant tonight, and I had a steak, and it just tasted too good. And so I called the chef back and I asked him, what's on the steak? And you know what? It was spices in an ingredient. It was MSG that they put all over the steak. He's like, I was so excited. I can taste it now. It was really funny. I was so excited for him because this was a big day for him um, that he could actually taste the difference. So um, just to remember, um, spices, autolyzed yeast extract, we've got a whole list uh, at the office of um, different ways that they label MSG. So if you need it, talk to Dawn, uh, she can give you that list. Uh, so while we're going by um, some of the uh, uh, spices or sauces here, um, I wanted to point out all of the boar's head sauces are actually gluten-free. Um, are they all wonderful for you? Not necessarily, but we don't use a ton of them anyway. Um, but every single one of these, they don't label, Sprouts is usually very good at labeling things gluten-free when they are. They have not labeled these gluten-free, but they're all gluten-free. If you look at the back of the label, there's a little tiny corner there. It says gluten-free on all of them, uh, so you can find it there. But all of their different uh, sauces and condiments are gluten-free, which is awesome. Okay. Uh, now, in our family, uh, a spicy snack of protein is really important. So one of the things we found is these boar's head um, essentially pepperonis or uh, sopressetas, which is a, um, another type of salami type of thing that's a little spicier. But they're nitrate-free, they're MSG-free, they're gluten-free. Gluten -free. Uh, so my kids really like to snack on these, um, put them in their snack bags at school, uh, something your kids might like too. Nice and spicy, so it uh, makes taste buds happy. Uh, and uh, one of the things a lot of people forget when they're doing gluten-free is you have to add spice. Spice is what makes food taste really good. So if you let it be boring, you're gonna get really bored of your food. So make sure to spice it up with things like this.
I also I wanted to share with you that Sprouts has started covering uh, our, our selling um, some cheeses that are not dairy, uh, not classic dairy. We have they have a number of brands of goat's milk cheeses now, which are hard cheeses, cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese. Uh, they also have uh, cheese milk cheese. Now goat's milk cheese, uh, goat's milk is very much like cow's milk. So you you go from cow's milk to straight goat's milk, and you don't limit how much goat's milk you're drinking. Um, or eating and cheese, it will cause an allergy very quickly. But if you do it maybe once every two weeks, you can have some cheese and not worry too much about it, as long as you're not too dairy allergic. Now, sheep's milk cheese is actually very different. You have a much less uh, likelihood of getting sensitive to sheep's milk if you're allergic to dairy already. Uh, just the same, I wouldn't do it all that often, but at least it gives you some option for some real cheese rather than just some of the fake cheeses out there. And we'll talk about those. Um, so feta cheese is something that you also have to be really careful of. Um, now we think of feta as typically being goat's milk or sheep's milk. Um, and so you think you can just grab feta, but I want to remind you, um, in the uh, Western market here in the U S they try to pass off all kinds of things as other, uh, as not dairy when they're truly dairy. So we have two fetas here. Um, one of them is goat's milk and one of them is cow's milk. Do they look any different from the outside? Nope. But let's look at the labels for just a minute here. This is, this is the label for the, um, the Odyssey feta, traditional feta. Uh, and we'll look at the quick label from, we'll have to get that one down the bottom here. Um, the quick label from the organic Greek uh, feta. And you can see that you can see that the organic Greek feta's label actually says sheep's milk. The traditional feta says milk. Guess what? It's made in Wisconsin. Promise you it's not goat's milk. It's regular dairy. Doesn't say a word about it being regular dairy. So you really got to read your labels. And when you go out to eat, uh, you can assume that the cheap feta that they put on salads and stuff uh, is going to be not goat's milk feta, but cow's milk feta. So just be careful when you're going out to eat or when you're buying stuff for home. So I wanted to discuss some of the beyond meats and impossible meats because they've become a huge thing right now, marketing wise. Uh, and that's because there's this whole push in the economy to get us away from meats and make meats too expensive for the common man to eat. So all the different stores are being forced to sell, to at least offer a set amount of beyond meats or impossible meats um, regarding, uh, regardless of what the people are actually purchasing. Um, so it's a mandate. They have to meet a certain amount in terms of the percentage of foods that they're selling. So I wanted to talk a little bit about a couple of the different options here just to point out what's good, what's not good, and whether these are actually good for you overall. So um, I'd like to go ahead and start first with the um, plant-based uh, burger patties. And let's look at the ingredients here. Okay, so the, um, the ingredients here, first one is water. Pea protein, not a bad thing, although it would be nice if it was organic. Um, the next ingredient is expeller pressed canola oil. Now tell me, do you really want canola oil that's not organic in your food? Because canola is one of the highest organic uh, or highest um, oils that is full of pesticides um, because they spray it with glyphosate um, numerous times in processing. Um, while it's growing. So you don't really want non-organic canola oil in your food. Um, you've also got uh, refined coconut oil. So refined meaning they've taken a lot of the uh, good oils out of it in the refining process. Um, you've got rice protein. Um, you've got natural flavors. There's that MSG again. So you're just dosing yourself with MSG to make this thing taste like a burger. Go figure. Um, they um, also, um, they're, uh, nothing else in here is really horrible. A lot of flavorings in here. We've got pomegranate extract, apple extract, beet extract, lemon juice concentrate, uh, and some vinegar. Um, the, it is gluten-free, um, which is nice, but there's a lot of things in here that you really don't want to be eating. So let's look at the other option here. This is an impossible meat burger patty. Um, and again, one of the other two brands that's uh, highly pushed. And we looked um, briefly at the ingredient list. The second ingredient in here is soy protein concentrate. Now, unfortunately, soy, the soy protein in these burgers is not organic. 
which means again, hugely full of pesticides. So essentially you're eating your burger, you're eating your pesticides, you're eating the glyphosate that's killing off your good bacteria, the lactobacillus and the bifidobacteria, which are your two most important ones. The uh, fourth ingredient uh, in here, so we have water, soy protein concentrate, coconut oil, sunflower oil, and then natural flavors. There's your MSG. So tell me, is this really something you wanna be putting in your body? I certainly wouldn't want to put it in my body. Give me the real meat if I'm going to eat it. I I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the other meats that uh, Sprout sells. They used to have a lot bigger section of organic meats over in their frozen section. It's shrunk down because now there's so many um, impossible meats. But one of the things I have found um, is they have some really nice uh, meatballs that are grass-fed organic meatballs. And uh, my kids love these things uh, for snacks uh, or for their lunch. They'll uh, cut them in half after I cook them and throw them in some tomato sauce with some vegetables. And then they'll scoop them out and eat them for lunch that way, which is a great non-grain containing uh, lunch. Uh, We we also have, we also have 100% grass fed organic meats. Of course, uh, you really do want, even if your meats are organic, Uh, fed, you also would really like grass-fed. Really important to have all those omega-3s in it. And ideally, you want 100% grass-fed and finished because that's how they cheat um, to make it cheaper and make the cows fatter, is they feed them grass the whole, their whole life until the last three months before they get slaughtered. And then they'll feed them great corn um, or hay that's full of pesticides uh, for the last, well, not not full of pesticides necessarily if it's organic, but Um, it will be corn fed instead of grass fed the last three months. So they've kicked out a lot of the good stuff by um, then feeding the uh, um, the grains. They also have ground lamb, which is awesome, um, but organic. Um, They have uh, ground venison, ground elk. So you have lots of different options of red meat. Um, They have bison uh, as well. Uh, and uh, have all kinds of options to stay away from, like, for instance, if you're allergic to beef, you can do the elk, you can do the bison, you can do the venison. They taste great. Um, they got a little, you have to be a little bit more careful about how you cook them and not cook them as well, but they taste awesome, and they're a good red meat option for those of you that can't do the beef for some reason. So I wanted to um, go through the uh, meat section a little bit of sprouts. Uh, you're going to probably find better meats uh, in general at some of the farmer's markets or online. Uh, there's a number of different sources, and John can probably talk to you about that a little bit, of uh, organic meats from um, different companies that wholesale organic um, far, uh, field raise or farm-fed um, pork um, and uh, chicken uh, and uh, beef as well. Uh, the more that you get from family farms that are raised the right way and not in big livestock um, areas, you're going to have a lot better meat. But I did want to point out that uh, Sprouts has um, Sprouts has some really good sausages here. Um, it is not organic, but it is gluten-free, MSG-free, uh, nitrate-free sausages. Um, so there's a lot of different options. Um, I tend to use their I tend to use their uh, sweet chicken sausage. Uh, for uh, pasta and it does a great job. Uh, my kids do like that, but it's also a quick fix and a day that you're in a hurry, throw some sausages on the grill um, and have something that's pretty easy and not that bad for you. As far as sausages, um, my kids uh, demand their sausage every morning for breakfast. Uh, they won't eat ch- cut up chicken or some of those other things. So I do have some sausages, again, not organic. I really haven't found some really good organic uh, breakfast sausages, but. Um, the uh, Swaggerty's um, sausage rolls, um, nitrate-free, gluten-free, MSG-free. Um, only thing they're not is not organic, uh, but great sausage. Does a great job. You can cut it up uh, and make a skillet out of it. You can cut it up in patties and cook it in the oven. Um, makes a really good breakfast sausage. It kind of tastes like Jimmy Dean, if you've ever had Jimmy Dean in the past. The other one of the other ones my kids have really liked quite a bit um, are these uh, um, Gilberti's Aloha sausages. Um, they are uh, gluten-free, um, nitrate-free. Uh, I don't believe they are organic. Nope, not organic. But again, um, a nice uh, quick fix uh, on a day that nothing else is going to work. So 
don't want to do it every day, but it's there for you when you have to and you're in a hurry. Applegate Organics makes a, an applesauce interest. That's awesome too. And you can get these at Costco in big bundles that are a lot cheaper than a four pack at Sprouts. Uh, the only issue is there's sugar in there. Um, so in, in general, you know, you got to make some gives and um, takes at times. Uh, you want to be as good on your diet as possible at the beginning, but as you get into regular life, you know, you got to figure out where the, where the, where the, uh, uh, where you can skip a little bit than being absolutely perfect. So um, here we're in the veg vegetable section. Obviously, we want to spend a lot of time over here uh, to uh, get the good vegetables that we need to keep us healthy. Um, so I wanted to uh, pull out potatoes. We got a yellow sweet potato. Uh, we've got yams over here as well. Um, and then we've got the organic ones. So if I were eating sweet potatoes or yams, what do I want? Do I want the non-organic from the left side here? Or do I want the organic from the right side? Actually, I don't want the non-organic. Potatoes are full of pesticides, even though they're hiding underground. Their root, their, the plant itself um, gets sprayed with pesticides a number of times in the uh, growing period, and they absorb all of that glyphosate into the potato. So nothing you can wash off is already in there. Uh, so you definitely want to try to get your potatoes all organic along the way. And some of the other things that you want organic um, every single time is your apples. Apples have a tremendous amount of pesticides in them, inside, not just on the outside, but inside if you get non-organic ones. Um, the same thing with strawberries, uh, things you want to get organic. Now, some of the cruciferous vegetables, if you want to look around to the other side of us here, we've got the cruciferous vegetables. You've got your broccoli, your cauliflower, your cabbage. Those guys don't have to be organic. So you can get those non-organic if there's a cost issue. Just killed that one. Um, you can get you can get those non-organic um, if you uh, need to for cost or because you just can't find them organic. Uh, not a big deal with those guys. Uh, if you are getting organic, you're going to get a lot healthier plant. It makes more of the good stuff for you um, if it hasn't been um, sprayed with all the fertilizers because it has to learn how to kill bugs on its own. All the things it uses to kill bugs are the things that make us healthy. So other things that you want to uh, certainly buy organic. What do you think? Peppers, tomatoes, are those really important to um, get organic? Absolutely. Uh, they are absolutely full of pesticides, if not. Bananas. Now, bananas, they've got a nice shell on them. So in general, things that have a nice shell on them, you don't have to worry about getting organic. But if bananas are a little different. When they um, pick bananas, they pick them really green. So to ripen them, they spray them with sulfates. Sulfites are preservatives. They're not particularly good for us. Um, and as the bananas ripen, they absorb more and more of the sulfates into them. So that by the time you're eating them, they're full of sulfates, unless you get the organic ones, in which case they are not sprayed with, sulf with sulfites at all to ripen them. So there is no sulfites in there. I found that out by personal experience because I used to get migraines every time I ate bananas um, until I found out somebody told me about the sulfate thing. I was like, huh, well, who knew? Uh, and once I stopped eating uh, the regular bananas and went to organic bananas, I didn't have any headaches anymore. So it's a big cause of migraines for some people. So um, how about avocados? Do you need to head your, do you need to get your avocados organic? Uh, actually, you don't. Um, again, they'll be better for you with more nutrition in them if they're uh, or if they're organic. But you do not have to get organic organic avocados all the time. If you don't, if you can't find them, or um, you know they're just not available. Uh, so one of the things uh, that we get asked about a lot is tomatoes. Are tomatoes on the vine healthier because they've got this nice little vine connected to it? Um, if they've been grown in a hot house, or are they actually healthier if they've been grown outside in the sun and all those things? Actually, your hot house tomatoes are not nearly as healthy. They don't have the amount of bugs that come out. They don't make as many good ingredients to fight off those bugs that really make us healthy. So you want to try to get your uh, your vegetables, your tomatoes in particular, that are grown outside in the sun and in the earth and around all the bugs, uh, and not necessarily the ones that are ground, grown in a hot house. Or um, the other ones, uh, there's uh, ones now that are grown in a, um, just water. Um, I'm forgetting what that's called at the moment. Um, but uh, that you can grow in your house and just like a water garden with the roots in water. And those, again, are not going to have quite the uh, 
nutritional value. They're certainly better than nothing. It's nice that you can grow them on your own. They're not going to have pesticides in them, but they're not going to have quite the nutritional value as something that's grown outside the yard uh, along the way. All of your greens, um, you definitely want organic. Um, your greens are full of pesticides if you're not getting them organic. So um, Sprouts has a huge section of organic greens, and that's def definitely where you're going to want to spend most of your shopping energy. So frozen vegetables are a great way to stock up so you have something in time of emergency or when you get home last minute or you've been on vacation and you need to find food uh, right away for yourself or your family. Now the issue, so we've got some green peas here, uh, organic green peas. So the issue with frozen vegetables is that they lose all of their vitamin K in the freezing process. Vitamin K is um, something that helps in coagulation. It also helps in the ability to use vitamin D and some of your other fat soluble vitamins properly. Um, so in general, you don't want to be eating all frozen vegetables. It's not going to give you the same nutrition as the fresh ones. So sprouts has a huge section, um, well, huge in comparison, of microgreens. And your microgreens are uh, seeds that have been just sprouted. Um, the seeds have a tremendous amount of nutrition in them. So if you want bang for your buck, getting microgreens are the best way to do it. And micro broccoli is actually the best of all worlds. Broccoli is full of sulforaphanes, which are very anti-cancer. Uh, and if you want the most sulforaphanes per teaspoon of what you're eating, the microgreens and the broccoli are going to be it. So definitely uh, broccoli sprouts, as much as you can fit them on anything, are going to be great for you. So uh, sprouts has a huge section of non-dairy uh, products as well. Um, up here they've got a number of different cheeses, uh, cheese alternatives. Um, the Diala or Zaya is a great one. Um, some people like it, some people don't. It doesn't melt very well. Um, they also have um, the Follow Your Heart cheese, and they actually have a Mykonos cheese typically, and I don't know where it is today. Um, that uh, both the Ch Follow Your Heart cheddar and the mozzarella they don't have our great. Um, they work really well mixed together. Um, we've made uh, quesadillas out of them. Um, and with uh, gluten-free tortillas, uh, they do great. Um, my kids really like them. Um, the slices, eh, not so great on top of your uh, burger, but they will work in a pinch um, if you do those guys. There's also a, uh, this is the Mykonos brand that actually does a, cheese, a cheddar cheese too that's not here today. Um, there's a bunch of different alternatives for um, butter. Um, if you're not eating real butter, uh, ghee, well, many people think ghee is a great butter alternative because it's supposed to be clarified and not have any of the milk proteins in it. I found for a lot of people, the amount of milk proteins in there is still too much. You still have the same dairy symptoms from it. So just an FYI, be extra cautious about that. But some of the milk alternatives here, the Earth Balance, the Earth Balance Organic, great for you. Has a little bit of soy, but at least it is organic soy. Uh, the melt organic butter um, is no soy in it, uh, does a great job. So these guys are the ones that I would recommend. They cook just like regular butter. Um, so you can use them uh, without any concern. Uh, there's, also, there's also a number of uh, dairy-free sour creams, dairy-free cream cheese. Uh, that's phenomenal. And then you need to have a, uh, a creamer in your hopefully not drinking coffee. Um, there's a lot of uh, alternatives um, for dairy in your, uh, in your coffee as well, or in your tea, if you're English. Um, a number of milk alternatives as well. Um, there's also some box ones that don't need to be refrigerated. Um, the milk damia is a great one. Um, you certainly want to make sure that your milk alternatives are unsweetened. So many of these guys are sweetened and don't say so. Their original formulas are typically sweet, so you have to be very careful. But the milk theme is a good macadamia nut milk. Um, the uh, uh, coconut milks are great. Oat milk doesn't have a lot of protein in oat milk, so just be a little careful. If you're looking for protein source, it's, it's no longer it. Uh, the ripple milk is something that we found has been absolutely fabulous. It looks and tastes very much like regular milk. It's got the same texture as regular milk, so my kids really do a lot of that. And we've been using that to make ripple milk ice cream uh, in a homemade ice cream maker, uh, which uh, works fabulous and as a really special treat. Uh, these guys, uh, the Khalifa almond milks also do a great job. Uh, 
So if you're looking for some chips for yourself, because you got a salt craving, uh, you just need something a little crunchy. Obviously, chips aren't the best source of calories. They're not um, particularly nutritious. Um, but oils aren't all bad for you. You do need some oils too. So which one would you choose? Would you choose the avocado oil or would you choose the olive oil? Now, olive oil is supposed to be good for us, right? Avocado oil is supposed to be good for us. But if you think about it, chips are fried at a very high heat. Avocado oil does well at high heat. Avocado oil does not. So you really want to look for the avocado oil chips uh, when you're looking for some chips. For all of us women out there and you guys too that love chocolate, it's really important to know that there is chocolate that is dairy-free and sugar-free. So you can have your good stuff and not be hurting yourself. So Lily's Chocolate makes bars as well as chocolate chips that are gluten-free and dairy-free um, as well as sugar-free. Uh, so please, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were doing this. <laughs> so please uh, feel free um, to grab these and eat it. I actually make my kids uh, waffles out of a whole grain mix that has no gluten in it um, and all, all dairy-free as well. And I uh, put chocolate chips in their waffles. They think they're getting the best thing since sliced bread every morning as a treat and no sugar, no nothing. And chocolate in the, in the end is actually good for us if it's dark chocolate because it's got a lot of flavonoids in it. So you can have your uh, dark chocolate and we'll go see some bars over on the other side too that are really good. So we've got two nut butters. There's a lot of different nut butters now. The nutso butters are actually really great. They've got a um, bunch of different things in them besides just uh, the non-peanut um, peanut butter. Um, the almond butters are a great option. They're really sweet. Ideally, you want a raw almond butter because it's much sweeter and you don't want your nuts roasted. Uh, they're actually much better for you if they're not roasted. However, uh, when you look at these brands, they look like they should be both relatively good for you, right? Well, stop, think again. Let's look at the ingredient list. This is Justin's ingredient list. Very, very short list of ingredients. And then we've got the Maranathi, sorry, Maranathi. Um, and here's its ingredient list. So you can see that the second ingredient in this brand is sugar. So is this the one you're supposed to be getting? No. So you really want to read your labels. It looks like it's nutritious. It's at Sprouts, so it's supposed to be good for you, right? Not necessarily so much. Another um, number of other nut alternatives. Cashew butter is great. Uh, walnut butter. Um, they actually just started selling at Costco. Sorry. They actually just started selling at Costco um, macadamia nut butter, which is amazing and organic. So I was super excited because I love macadamia nuts. So there's a lot of sugar alternatives. Um, when I cook, I never cut out 100% all the sugar and just use the sugar alternative because it doesn't taste quite the same. But I usually use coconut sugar. Uh, the coconut sugar is not cane sugar. Cane sugar is very similar in its form to gluten. Uh, so a lot of people that are allergic to gluten, um, allergic to dairy, are allergic to cane sugar. So using a coconut sugar is a good alternative. Now, if we're trying to cut down sugar overall, then sugar alternatives are really nice. I, they recently uh, just started offering Swerve at Sprouts in both a granular version and a powdered version. Um, the Swerve is a uh, probiotic mix with erythritol. So erythritol is a sugar alcohol. If you get too much of the sugar alcohol, it can give you diarrhea. So you've got to be a little wary of that. You can't just overdose um, stuff with it. Um, but this works very well with cooking and baking. Um, they also have the monk fruit extract that's been around a little bit longer. Uh, it's monk fruit with erythritol as well. Um, also does very well in cooking and baking. Um, acts like normal, uh, normal sugar. Uh, the other option um, is uh, stevia. Um, stevia uh, is a very, very super sweet. You have to be extra cautious when you're cooking with it um, to use a lot less than you would regular sugar. Um, but it is a good option um, for you. Um, some people love the taste of it. Some people hate the taste of it. So you just got to figure out what works for you. The Char Bread is another brand of bread that tastes almost like normal bread. So I just wanted to point it out to you. Again, it's bread. It shouldn't be something you're eating a lot. Um, but they do have... Um, they do have definitely some really long French bread, French uh, bread loaves that they don't have today. They have little sandwich bread 
um, ones that are essentially the same thing, just shorter. Um, and they do have, for those of you that like sourdough, they've got sourdough bread. Um, and they've been using that for a while. They also have um, multi-grain bread. They have some bagels that are awesome. Um, so they really offer some good alternatives. They do have, you have to be aware um, that it does contain a small amount of soy and it does contain a small amount of cornstarch. Um, I like it because it's the only bread out there that doesn't have tapioca in it. Um, they use cornbread, they use cornstarch instead of tapioca since I'm super sensitive to tapioca. So you can kind of um, work around some of your um, sensitivities um, using some different alternatives, even uh, just got to be careful because again, they're not all full of stuff that we should all be eating. If you're looking for a very low sugar cookie, this is more of a European style cookie. It's an oat graham, works great for s'mores for kids, um, but very, very low sugar um, and whole grain fiber uh, on oats and gluten free. So we do the, a lot of these um, in the winter time when my kids are at motorcycle races and uh, doing s'mores. We got our dark chocolate um, and we've got our uh, gluten-free marshmallows and we got our organic uh, oats um, that work great. So let's talk about soups for a minute. Soups are a great source of hidden gluten. So definitely if you're getting canned soup of any type, make sure you're checking your labels because a lot of times there's stuff in there that you really don't want. Um, but the ingredients are also really important for soups because soups in general are laden with MSG. So you really want to make sure you know exactly what you're getting. And that doesn't have anything else in it that you don't want. So here again, we got two soups that are vaguely tomato um, as a base uh, that are, that the, one of them has peppers in it too. But let's look at the ingredients and see which one we should think about buying. If we're supposed to be gluten-free and dairy-free and MSG free. So let's take a quick look at the ingredient list. Okay, so this is the Pacific Foods brand. And now we've got the Imagine brand uh, and we've got the ingredient list way over here. So you can see that the um, Pacific brands is actually full of dairy. It's also got a nice little ingredient. Let's see, we've got reduced fat milk. So if you're trying to do dairy free, this is the old fashioned tomato made out of milk. Um, it's got water, tomato paste, red bell pepper, cane sugar. So fifth ingredient is cane sugar. Um, and it's also got this magic ingredient, spices at the end. So you're getting MSG uh, that you don't really want. The Imagine brand in general um, has a nice little label here that says organic, non-GMO, vegan, non-dairy, gluten-free, no added MSG, uh, and no artificial ingredients and preservatives. So you know when you're getting your Imagine that you're not getting any MSG. There's also no dairy in here. They're, they do, however, have evaporated cane sugar, but it's way down on the list. Um, so if you're going to choose one of the two soups, uh, you definitely do better with the Imagine soup than the uh, Pacific brand. You have, to work, you have to really watch your bone broths and your other um, beef stocks or bone stocks or um, chicken stocks as well because a lot of those are just stock full of MSG. Read your labels, know what you're getting. So when you hit the uh, uh, pasta section, um, in general we know that uh, gluten pasta is the regular spaghetti is probably not what we want to be eating. There's a huge variety of pastas now. Uh, some of them, however, um, I have found over my years do not work very well. They turn into mush, they break into pieces. You get like a soup of noodles instead of stuff that actually stays together and works for you. Generally at our house, we use zucchini noodles. I have a little zoodler that twists the zucchini and it uh, comes out as a bunch of noodles. It's done by hand, it's really easy to do. You can take it anywhere with you. Um, but uh, my kids prefer regular noodles. So what we found uh, works really well for us. Uh, this uh, Joy gluten-free pasta, uh, which is little spirals, stays together. You can actually reheat it later and it still stays together. Um, so it's a really good option. Um, and it's pure rice. There's nothing else in it than rice. So it's not full of a, a bunch of other ingredients uh, as well. Um, the noodles, not so great. They do fall apart. Uh, one of the big problems with rice noodles. Um, they've got a bunch of other noodles now. They've got um, the like this brand, um, which is uh, made from chickpeas. Um, so definitely a little bit better for you. 
But uh, if you look at the ingredients, uh, chickpeas, pea starch, tapioca, and xanthan gum. So there are some other ingredients in there. You really want to try to get uh, a pasta that is just purely the uh, pea um, or bean type that you're looking for. Dawn has some samples at our office of a brand that you can order online um, that uh, actually tastes awesome, sticks together, tastes great, um, and uh, does great with all kinds of different uh, toppings on it. This is the Barilla brand um, is the ones that we have samples of at the office. So guess what? They're at Sprouts now. They just got here recently because they weren't here the last time I checked. So, hey, you can get the same stuff here. We really liked the uh, red lentil version um, of the rotinis um, not more than the uh, penne, but uh, either one is good. We've also got behind us um, some of your sauces. Um, and um, there are a number of gluten-free sauces, but I particularly wanted to point out um, the coconut aminos. Um, soy sauce is made out of soy. In general, not something we, we want to be eating a lot of um, because most of the time it's non-organic and full of pesticides. The coconut aminos are your version of soy. A little bit sweeter. You may have to add a little extra salt to it when you're cooking uh, to make it taste like soy in your ingredients um, in your final product but it actually works great. Um, my kids love it. Um, I use it all the time. That's my major go-to. So you'll see here that there's a number of different beans available um, in cans. Um, it is nice um, that, as I drop them <laughs> on the ground, um, it is nice that some of these cans um, from Spouts are BPA free. However, some of the BPA alternatives inside the cans are probably no better for us than the BPA. Um, so in general, if you can avoid canned foods as much as possible, um, you can have an Instant Pot that cooks beans very quickly and use the, uh, the um, dry beans um, much better for you. Actually, heck of a lot cheaper, too. Uh, it just takes a little bit of prior planning. Uh, but uh, the BPA-free cans are um, the best we got as an alternative for a quick fix um, when, uh, when you need to have somebody in your, something in your pantry uh, for a uh, cooked meal. Beans are great. Beans are a great source of protein, so a uh, great thing to have available when you need it. We've also got some of the other ketchups and mustards and sauces here. I just kind of wanted to cover those a little bit. The one that we like, the one that we like best at home in terms of ketchup is the organic version. It has no sugar in it. It only has agave syrup. So a good, a good alternative to a standard ketchup, which is just full of sugar uh, and cane sugar at that, or high fructose corn syrup. Um, you've also got a number of mustards here. Um, some of them do have sugar in them. Um, there's a number of them um, that are gluten-free. Um, they're typically labeled as such. Um, yeah. You've got some spiced honey mustards up here labeled gluten-free. Um, this uh, version of them. Um, and again, all of the boar's head up front um, that we saw were gluten-free. So you can use any of those without worrying too much about them. Um, there's a ton of um, barbecue sauces. Barbecue sauces, again, are full of sugar. If you look at the Primal brand um, here someplace, um, oh, there it is, thank you. Um, the Primal brand generally has no sugar in it. Um, you may want to add a little bit of agave syrup or something to it. Sometimes it can be a little too sour, but if you're really looking for no sugar alternatives, the Primal brand has a great brand. Um, otherwise, there's a number of uh, gluten-free alternatives uh, as well uh, along the list. So you don't have to give up all your condiments to go gluten-free and dairy-free. So in my household, the world has to include ice cream. So I've found a lot of different alternatives for ice cream uh, that we really like uh, in our house and that do the job. Again, ice cream is full of sugar. Uh, so that's why we've turned to making more of our own and using the swerve sugar um, in it and using the ripple milk because the ripple milk ice cream is my kid's favorite because of the quality and the thickness of the uh, ripple, the pea protein milk. So right here, you can see where the ripple milk ice cream is supposed to be. Uh, three different flavors there. They've got an Oreo cookie that is not gluten-free, but they also have a chocolate and a vanilla ripple milk uh, ice cream that does fabulous. Uh, and uh, we've also got a number of uh, uh, coconut milk ice creams and macadamia milk ice creams, the uh, Mauna Loa and macadamia milk. Um, we've got coconut milk, the So Delicious version. Um, they've got oat milk versions here. 
Uh, so many versions. You just got to really be careful if you're getting um, funky flavors that they're still gluten free because most of them in general are gluten free. But if you get some really funky flavors, it's going to not be gluten free. So again, special treat, not in a large amount, um, but they sell them in tiny containers. So you can't, if you, uh, it's kind of mandated that you eat a smaller amount of them um, when they have the small containers. The other thing that we do in our household um, for Easter time is that we've given up candy for Easter. Um, so one of the things that we did um, for years now is that we've done donuts um, inside of Easter eggs, the munchkins for um, Easter uh, instead of the candy as a much better option. So I was super excited when I found gluten-free donuts um, at the store. So again, special treat. They're still pure sugar, um, but they do awesome. They taste awesome. The kids love them. Um, so a bunch of different options in there um, if you need a special treat for an occasion for grandkids or something of the sort. Now, uh, prefab food is not particularly what you want to be eating a lot of. Uh, but again, if you got kids, you got grandkids, you want to make sure there's stuff in your house uh, that you can eat at a moment's notice uh, if you need to. They do have some uh, really good options. Um, the uh, Applegate Natural make some gluten-free chicken nuggets, which actually tastes really good. Um, my kids are also really fond of corn dogs. So we have, um, every once in a while, they get some corn dogs at lunch for a special treat. Um, it makes them feel super special and super uh, appreciated. Uh, so uh, also nice to have some good options. Dr. Prager's also has some gluten-free um, fish sticks. Again, fish sticks, by the time they're fried, probably aren't all that great. But uh, again, they're options um, that, uh, you know, are okay once in a while, as long as they're not breaking. So uh, there's a lot of um, alternative for bars. I mean, one of the hardest things if you're trying to be gluten-free, dairy-free, and eat a healthy diet um, and not eat all the carbs is to find quick foods. Um, so one of the hardest things to find when you're trying to eat healthy um, and not eat a lot of carbs is quick foods to eat on the run. So one of the things that I found that works really well is some nutritious jerky style products. So one of the ones that I love best um, is the Epic Foods brand. They have all different flavors. The buffalo um, is my favorite. It's buffalo, and, um, buffalo with uh, uncured bacon and cranberries in it. Uh, my dog loves it too. He gets it a treat at lunchtime. So if you see Gizzy at the office, you know he loves these too. Um, but uh, these guys are great. Um, they're really soft. They're not chewy. Um, they're great beef. Uh, they're a great snack alternative. There's a bunch of different brands that are flavors. They've got beef, uncured bacon, venison. Um, they've got a beef barbacoa, um, apple and bacon with beef, a chicken, uh, a seasoned chicken, a sriracha chicken. Uh, a lot of different flavors of them. Um, we've also found that uh, some of the biltongs um, are great. They're actually just dried beef with some seasoning on them. Um, very nutritious, uh, very easy to eat, um, and, and again, good for you and easy to take on the go. Um, we, we like the Archer brand as well. Uh, ideally, the zero sugar, of course, uh, but those work really well as well. Um, and I've actually really liked the portobello jerky. Um, mushrooms, again, are, are typically very good meaty flavor um, without uh, having actually meat in them. So if you're vegetarian, those are a good option um, on the go as well. And I wanted to discuss, I'm going to move over here to the chocolate section because, of, uh, again, um, life is not complete without a little bit of chocolate in, in my world in particular. Um, so we've got some really good chocolate versions. My favorite uh, version these days um, beyond the Lily's chocolate is the Hue chocolate. Um, it is uh, dark chocolate. Uh, it's got coconut sugar in it um, and non-dairy. So uh, if you're, it does have some sugar in it, um, but very low amounts of sugar uh, and it is non-dairy. So again, it's a fairly decent option. Your Lily's is your best option, but if you really hate the taste of stevia, then this is a good option. Um, and they have a lot of flavors here you can choose from. Um, cashew nut butter, vanilla crunch, mint chocolate, hazelnut fluffy, all kinds of, and they have the little snacking gems that they just started carrying, which are little tiny nuggets of chocolate. So easier to throw out a couple at a time and, and then close up the bag. 
So Lily's makes a bunch, uh, Lily's chocolate I was just talking about a moment ago, uh, does make a bunch of different kinds of chocolate. They do have, um, if you're looking for um, their bars, um, they do say no sugar on them. Some of them do have milk chocolate um, in them. So this one is a milk chocolate style. So guess what? It's going to, and it's caramel, so it's going to have dairy in it. Um, but it is uh, no sugar added. They do have, really, if you're looking for the non-dairy one, you want the bacon no sugar option. Um, which I'm not sure if it's in here at the moment. Um, this is dark and rich, extra, let's see, sweet chocolate, erythritol, sugary root, cocoa butter. Um, actually, this one is uh, dairy-free. Um, so uh, um, this is a dairy-free version, the sea salt extra dark chocolate version. Um, and for some reason, it doesn't say vegan, uh, but it is that way. So again, got to read your labels a little bit, but that the uh, Lily's chocolate is a great version, um, no sugar variety. The Hue is a uh, very low sugar, but it's coconut sugar, so a much better option for you as well. So got to have the joys in life, man. Now, Halloween is especially hard time to get through if you're being gluten-free, dairy-free, sugar-free. So um, we found some treats along the way that have very low sugar or no sugar whatsoever. The Lily's chocolate um, does make uh, peanut butter cups. I prefer they were almond butter cups, but you know, in a pinch they'll do. Um, and uh, they do have uh, no dairy, no sugar in them, which are a great option. They taste great. And you know what? If you have a special treat for your kid, you can throw them in their lunch bag that day and they think they've died and gone to heaven. Uh, it's awesome. Um, these Unreal bars are also very good, uh, very low in sugar um, and uh, gluten-free. Um, the uh, ingredients are coconut, cassava syrup, um, dark chocolate syrup, cane sugar, and cocoa butter. So there is a little bit of cane sugar in here, but they're very unsweet, uh, very small, so very easy to throw um, in a snack bag or just grab one at the end of the meal if you really had to have something sweet that night. So I have in front of me three different types of chips because I want to kind of go through them with you to make sure that you're reading labels. So we've got three different flavors of Boulder Canyon. We've got the Boulder Canyon sea salt. We've got the Boulder Canyon malt vinegar and sea salt. And then we've got the Kickery barbecue. So let's talk about what we can do if we're doing gluten-free and MSG-free and dairy-free and what maybe we shouldn't be doing. Um, so a little lesson on uh, re uh, ingredient less to get. So first of all, let's look at the avocado oil um, chips and look at their ingredient list. Um, very, very short line of ingredients. The more you're reading your ingredient list and you can't pronounce the word, you shouldn't be buying it. Uh, so we like really short ingredient lists. Potatoes, avocado oil, sea salt. That's pretty good for us. So we'll put that one back. That's something we can definitely get. So let's look at the avocado oil, malt vinegar, and sea salt, right? Should be pretty good. The other one's just fine. Why can't we just grab this one? Let's look at the ingredient list here. Look how long that ingredient list is. All kinds of things we shouldn't be eating there. And malt flavoring is generally gluten. So if you're finding maltodextrin, if you're finding malt flavoring, not a good thing. You also have, um, you also have some, uh, um, no MSG necessarily in there, but you also have cornstarch in there. Uh, so not something that you definitely want on your chips if you're trying to avoid corn. So lastly, we've got our otherwise healthy brand, Boulder Canyon, with the Hickory, Hickory Barbecue. So let's look at their ingredient list here. So again, very long list. We've got rice flour in there. We've got uh, dextrose in there. And we got this magic uh, ingredient, spices. So there's your MSG. So you got tons of MSG on here. In general, any of your flavored chips are going to have a ton of MSG in them. The only ones that are not um, MSG, that are not full of MSG that are chips are your cassava chips. The Siete brand, you can get any of the flavorings um, of the chips and they do not have MSG in it. Uh, check them all out. You can check for yourself, but there's no MSG, no spices, no uh, yeast extract, no flavorings in there. Um, so you're pretty safe with all the Siete brands if you can, if you can do the uh, cassava chips. 